Welcome back to That So Vegas. I'm your host, Christine McKellar, with a fantastic, I'm going to say fantabulous, David Macy. <laughs> Hello. I just love you. <laughs> We're having such a good time. I David, know, it's fun. Yes, and we Because it's cool in here, kids. <laughs> yes, it is. Last week, that broke down. That's another story. No, it's all good. I oh survived. Oh, my God. Makeup melted. But David was telling us <laughs> how he got to become one of the most luckiest suave accomplishment in the world because of this uh, fabulous job as a photographer for 23 years with Playboy. Yeah. And the story, for those of you who are tuned in, also, viewers, we know you have a couple questions. So we're going to get to we'll them get to in those. just a minute. Want to wrap up what we were talking about? Show us the lady who catapulted you into this fantastic the career. The young lady from um, that I photographed from Shreveport, Louisiana, and this is this is the photograph. Is that it is showing? The, yes. That is the photo. That's one of the photographs from the shoot that we did, and. Okay. It's, I call it the, the, the photo that launched a thousand years yeah. <laughs> of my career. <laughs> but um, anyway, what's funny, um, well, not really funny, it's kind of tragic because I really dug her. And so when, when I went up there, I said, well, you know, where is she? How did it when go? When you went to Playboy. Right, right. I, how did it go? Did she become a playmate? Well, no, not really. While she was here, she met a magician, and basically we haven't seen her since. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. So she meets a magician and disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but that's what happened. Was I he mean, a Vegas magician? Do you know? I think it was. I think that what when they met, according to them, she ended up going with him here to Vegas, yes. Las Vegas, and vanished. And 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 vanished. That's so Vegas. Uh, I had to throw that out there. Uh, exactly, <laughs> but <laughs> you have a couple friends or t viewers. I don't know if they're I, friends or not, or even know. I don't know. Well, are, Hollywood. I, well, we have that's next door to where I once lived, and I did live there once. Yeah. And uh, Hollywood wants to know which photographers' books influenced you. That's a good question, by the way. Which uh, the books were um, a, a, a lot of different books influenced me back then. Um, from, uh, but the, uh, probably the most influential would be Helmut Newton, some of his stuff. Not mm -hmm. everything. I, I'm, I'm not big on the saddles on the girls' backs, but, <laughs> oh. uh, but I did love his, his, his uh, use of tall, uh, angular models, more fashion-looking models, uh, natural beauties statuesque his uh his the demeanor that they that he would create in his photographs was really cool and nice. sexy so i liked his books uh -huh. as well as um there was a um uh, the work of another photographer hero, hero. Japanese. He, 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 but his stuff was incredibly saturate color, beautiful stuff. I think he shot everything large format, like 8 by 10 mm. which was a precursor, actually, to something I in, had to end up learning how to do once I went to work for Playboy, because back in the old days, all of the centerfolds were shot with an 8 by 10 view camera. Uh -huh. And I had no clue what that was about. Wow. So I literally, when I went to Playboy, had to do a self-learning thing on shooting with the 8 by 10 view camera. You seem very good at that. Yeah. Remember the Vargas girls in the old Playboys? The yeah, sketchy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was an yeah. uh, interesting era. Uh, not to, you know, cut you off or anything, but no. we have another question, and this is from Janice. Have you ever photographed any of the girls next door? I did. Um, in fact, it was Holly, Holly Madison. Oh, she's here now. Yeah, she's here. She's been uh, in Vegas really, for Really, really super young lady. Uh, I, had to, I had the opportunity to um, actually... I found Holly in San Francisco when she came in for an interview. You uh, discovered her, so to speak. So to speak. Um, I've had the opportunity and and uh, to to find about twenty playmates of the month as well as a playmate of the year. And over the course of your in the course of my career, my twenty three years there, just uh, by being someplace at the right time and 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 and, and, the and or when they come into interview, I would see them and go, "Gosh, she's got that look. She's got a playmate oh. thing going." And I I would s make sure that that girl got in front of the editors immediately and got a test put together for him and all that kind of stuff. So that's that was it. You know what? We have another uh, <laughs> viewer who says, is it Rob Track? You look just like a guy who was blazing oh. <laughs> down the Autobahn with last week. I have a feeling you know this person. I know this guy. Last yes, week. yes, I, I was know this guy. waiting for him to come back. I didn't want him to miss the show. <laughs> That's so. Joe. That's Joe. Oh. Hey, Joe. Hi, Joe. Yes. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Joe was with me when I did my uh, workshop in Germany. That's another thing we want to talk about is his these workshop. workshops. Yeah. He has so much going on. We want to talk about your race driving, your race car driving yeah, career. Yeah, well, uh, what was so fun was the fact that I I was able through friends in Germany. Uh, I have these wonderful friends. Uh, uh, Guido Karp and his wife Nicole were the ones that were so helpful in making this happen for me over there. Um, then um, uh, he, a friend of his, 
uh, by the name of Olaf, but not the not the snowman, but uh, <laughs> but Olaf were, uh, is a photographer at the Nurburgring. The most famous, yeah, uh, very tiny uh, bits. I yeah, uh, I can I can I can count to ten, and that's about I it. So can I? <laughs> <laughs> a few and other choice uh, words, but but they're they're trying to teach me over there. Every time I go over, everybody tries to teach me another word. And the workshops are something that you created. I started doing workshops actually back when I was at Playboy. It, it was sort of a, a an offshoot of when I was at Playboy because I was single and and I could pick up and go at the drop of a dime anywhere they wanted. A lot of like camera clubs around the country kept asking Playboy, "Can you have somebody come and talk to us about the way you do photography?" Yeah, because you are special. We'll so talk they, about that too. So they Playboy started sending me out, and I started doing these these talks, and 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 then I started doing seminars, and then the next thing I know. Uh, a couple of uh, camera manufacturers, like uh, and then lens companies like Tamron and or Bronica. Bronica is no longer around, but Bronica had me uh, actually showing how to use their camera, and and I would and I would literally start talking about how to do the lighting so and all this kind of stuff. So it kind of evolved, right? And people can go to your website www.davidmesey.com and Correct. look up the workshops and the how workshops to sign up and all that kind of thing. And and in fact, we are uh, Guido and I are uh, doing something pretty fantastic in uh, late September. Uh, they, if anyone is interested in, in going to Germany uh, for photographing a, beautiful women like uh, this uh, to, to see our, our uh, photo festival that's going to be going on um, you can email me david at da uh, davidmisi.com that's, right, that's my email address and mm -hmm. just uh, and I'll be sure to put you in touch with uh, Guido and we'll see what we can do we have another question and this is from RV Systems what is the Playmate girl look how would you describe that do we have one going on in this brochure well it was um, well it's it's changed actually uh, in we'll just currently yeah, yeah I mean these these aren't Playmates but uh, could very well be Playmates it's usually a girl with a um, innocent kind of a, a face uh, that kind of thing uh, a, a nice body but not in the old days, it wasn't so much a like a fitness body, long, lean, and tall. It was a little more voluptuous, like Marilyn Monroe or something like that. Sure, and and but the, the, it was that kind of innocence in in their uh, face and attitude that that was. Yeah, you wouldn't want some hard West, you know, bra West Coast brothel madame looking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we talked a little bit on the break too about part of the reason that you pulled away a bit with, uh, towards the end at the Playboy, and we were talking about because my question for women is uh, be I think anybody could be beautiful with a pr well, enough money with all the enhancements. You can have your ribs cut out, your buttocks done, your breasts done, your face done and everything. And I asked you the question, yeah. as a photographer, say if you were shooting nature, you wouldn't want a chiseled, you know, man-made bridge. So your comment was, and uh, particularly women with breast enhancements. I began to, I began, I began to become disenchanted with, with the magazine uh, back in the 90s when when it became almost de rigueur for girls to have a boob job to get uh, into the magazine, and uh -huh. and I, I I felt that they were th they they were slowly getting away from the essence of what Playboy was, which was, you know, the girl next door. Well, usually girls next door don't have you know boob jobs, right? And so uh, you know, I, but then again, it, it I think it, it what happened was once they started that f those first few girls that that had that done started appearing in the magazine, all the girls thought, oh. Well, that's what I have to do. Well, no, that wasn't the case. It's just right. it's just one of those things that it sets off a fury or a flurry of everybody wanting to do the same thing because that looks cool and, and they got accepted. Right. But instead of going at it the way they already are and, and making sure that everything they already have is what Playboy would want, then they jumped on the bandwagon to have a lot of work done. And then everything becomes looking the same, like a cookie cutter mold, Pretty much, so to yeah. speak. And, and I always thought men like diversity, excuse me, or variety or something. But but w but out of all those, uh, but out of all those, there's there's good boob jobs, yes. But right. then there's so many bad ones. And right. and back when I was working for Playboy, I used to, I I was given the job to go interview girls, either anniversary search or a playmate search or just a girl search. Mm -hmm. And that required me doing Polaroids of them, at least topless, during an interview. Right. I saw so many bad boob jobs that, that, uh, that one day, I, was, I remember this, it, it's like, it was like, uh, it was my epitome was, was when I, I was in uh, Arizona, I won't say which town, but I was in Arizona and uh, I had seen about 150 girls this one girl came in who Poor was a, a beautiful, beautiful girl, and she had the worst boob job. And I almost, I almost, I almost had tears 
because I, I, I knew she was a playmate. Face, figure, everything else was there, but the boobs were just horrible. Oh, that's so and sad. that's when I decided, yeah, I gotta. I, I think this is not working anymore. You know what I like, and we have to go to break again. But this girl that you shot in Germany, you can tell obviously that is her God-given endowments because she her breasts well, this go one's with not, her body. She's not from Germany, but Oops. I did shoot one in Germany that looks just like this. Yeah. We'll in fact, I'll, I'll bring her picture up as well. Okay, good. We'll be right back. We have to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be back in five minutes.